Okay, so the sound that I've got in my mind today, which I'd like to try and create, um, is a it's kind of a, a, a bass sound. It's a, it's a busy waveform, a saw or a square, which slowly uh, opens up a filter, a low pass filter, and does this big kind of womp, which is heavily reverberated, kind of a big atmospheric, epic um, bass sweep sound. So what I'm going to do is get rid of this audio track here, and here's my MIDI track where I'm going to construct the sound. I'm going to load up an instrument rack here, and let's use an operator, so I'm dragging my operator into one of the chains of the instrument rack. So now let's play a note. So there's a nice sine wave, we've got our sine wave on our first oscillator, let's change that to a square wave, so I've got a really busy sound. Let's make it a saw. And let's turn the filter on. So that's the sound we want. So the way we're going to do that is we need to automate the envelope of the filter, which is over here. So if we bring the... Um, let's say, let's bring the amount of the envelope up to 100%. So this envelope, or this line here, is going to affect this frequency cutoff by 100%. Now we can drag the attack out. So the attack is how long it takes for the filter to open up. So if we bring the filter down to its lowest value... Let's take about 2.5 seconds. Very cool. And we want absolutely no decay time. We want it to stop as soon as it's reached the top point. Excellent. What I'm also going to do is go into the envelope of the oscillator here, and I'm also going to give the envelope um, an attack time of 2.5 seconds as well. So it slowly comes in as, in volume as it cuts off, or 2.7 will do. And we want to have no release time, no decay time. And zero, uh, sorry, negative infinity sustain. So it goes to silence. Let's bring that down to 2.5 so it matches exactly. And let's take an octave down. Not bad. Um, for the filter, we can click on this little blue thing here and we can drag our own little curve, which is good because I'd like this to slowly creep in and swoop up with a nice curve instead of just a straight line. So let's try it there. Very cool. And the next part would be to add a reverb to the end of it. So let's drag a reverb down afterwards. Have a listen. It's quite nice. Let's give it a, a long decay time, say 15 seconds. And bring the dry wet down a little bit. And let's turn the high cut off so everything reverbs, reverberates. Very cool. One octave lower. Let's try that. Yeah, I really, really like that. Let's give it a bit of pre-delay. Let's give it a lot of pre-delay, see how that sounds. Let's give it the maximum amount of pre-delay. Not bad. Maybe half that, say 125. I really, really like that. Now, that's cool. Um, but what I would like to have is some kind of tail end of them on the sound, something which does hold on quietly, which gives it a little bit of an eerie feeling once that sweep has gone away. So I'm going to rename this one as Sweep, and let's load a new synthesizer into our instrument rack. Let's load up an analog. So I'm going to mute the sweep, and we're just going to work on the analog. So let's play a note. Not bad, but let's go to the um, amplitude, let's bring the sustain time up, and the release, a uh, little bit of a release. Sounds good. Um, let's add another oscillator. I'm trying to look for some kind of strange pulsing, eerie sound, um, possibly with a format filter to give it a really nice um, kind of, uh, I don't know, something strange. Um, so we've got two oscillators. Let's detune them slightly. So pitching one up slightly and pitching one down slightly. A little bit more. Let's go five. Not bad. Um, let's try the format. So uh, first thing I need to do is go to this tab here and set the routing to the correct um, the correct path. So I want oscillator one, oscillator two to go through filter one and amplitude one. Um, so I want them 
the this this module and this module I want them to affect both of these so we go back here and we select that one there so now oscillator 2 and oscillator 1 are going through this filter so let's change that to a format bring the volume down Very cool. Now let's give the frequency a little bit of uh, LFO modulation. Turn the LFO on, go back to the frequency, turn the LFO one up. And let's make this sync. Let's also give the amplitude some LFO. Well, it's pan, but that actually sounds quite cool. Let's leave that, and but here's the level. But we need to bring the level down a bit here. So, I guess the key things here are these two. These control the format. Um, probably the uh, rate of the LFO as well and the detune. So let's set those four to the macro knobs that we're going to use, and we'll use these ones here. So I'm going to go into map mode, uh, the frequency of the format is mapped to there, the resonance of the format is wrapped to there, the rate of the format is here, and let's sync the detune amount to this one. So I need to map that to that detune. I need to have the upper one um, set on a zero minimum value and a maximum value of three. I need to also map this detune as well, but this one needs to be negative 3 and 0 at the max. Actually, let's reverse that. That's 3, that's 0. That is 0. No, these need to both be 0, sorry. So these are both 0, and at the maximum value, this is at plus 3, this is at negative 3. So as you can see, as I move the detune up, you see how this one goes anti-clockwise, this one goes clockwise, so that detunes it a lot. So we'll call that detune. Let's just rename these. Let's go format freak. And this one is format res. This one is, call it format LFO rate. Letterloo, and detune. So, let's just bring that pan. Actually, I'm going to get rid of the pan on the amplitude LFO. We don't need that. We can actually achieve that effect by. Well, for a start, let's add a reverb after it to give it a bit of a. And let's put just a phaser after that to give it a bit of space. Light up a phaser, give it eight poles, change the rate down a bit, give it a lot of LFO, and let's play with the frequency feedback till we find the sweet spot. Bring the uh, LFO down a bit. It's really nice harmonics. That sounds good. Let's listen to it with the sweep. Now that's all good, but I don't want this analog play. We'll call this the tail. I don't want this to play when the sweep's happening. I want this to come in after the sweep is hit, because this is the, the tail. Um, so one way we could go about this would be or a good way would be to load up a compressor after it. Let's sidechain the compressor. Let's take the input from instrument rack, instrument rack sweep pre-effect. So it's going to take the sound of that big sweeping sound um, before it has a reverb tail on it. So if I click the headphone icon here, we can actually listen to that sound play. 
So that compressor uh, is taking the sound. Let's just mute this. That's where it's taking the um, side chaining information from. So if I bring the threshold right down, I'll turn this little headphone off. If I bring this right down. So see how it kind of gets out of the way. It's put the ratio at infinity. Remember, we're kind of using this as a tool to get rid of the sound rather than actually compress it. So I don't think I'm breaking any compression rules. Let's bring the gain right up so it cuts it all out. No sound, then, then it comes in. Cool, so let's put them both together, see what we've got. Phase is a little bit too much for me, so let's bring the phaser down a bit. But less feedback. Slower rate. Maybe even more reverb. A bit more dry wet, a bit more time. We really like those harmonics, you need a harmonic series. Very cool. So we've got our four um, our four macro knobs here for the um, the uh, second tail, which is fun. Let's let's set some macro knobs to the fun things of the operator. Um, let's let's mute the tail for a second. We can figure out a way to make that sweep a bit different. Um, you now, one good way pops into mind would be to use the second oscillator as a frequency modulator for the first one. Um, so let's set this as a, at a fixed value, and let's bring the level up of this. So B is uh, modulating how A sounds. Um, so let's um, bring the level up and have a listen. So that's very very cool, I like that. So I'm going to map the frequency of the fixed oscillator B um, to that knob and the level of that to that knob. So let's rename these just quickly, we'll call this sweep, um, I'll call it FM freak and we'll call this one FM level. So now we can play with these two to change the sound. That's cool. Um, what happened if we bring the size down of the reverb? Might sound a bit messy, but. Alright, we'll leave that one. How about the resonance? That's always a good one, so we'll set the resonance here. We won't set the filter because the filter is sweeping with the envelope. Very cool. And let's find something else to play with. What if we turn the LFO on, take the destination away from the oscillators, send it to the filter, bring the amount up and the rate up. There we go, I like that. 
So what I'll do is I'm going to map both of these knobs to one. See how that sounds. The, both the amount and the rate of the LFO. Very cool, and if these are set back down to zero. There's my sound, I'm happy with that. Um, let's give these some colours, because colours are cool. We'll go set the blues and the greens. Very nice. Oh, we'll call this one uh, filter LFO. There you go, that's the sound, um, and now we need to save it, uh, let's think of a name for it, um, how about Keith, there you go, awesome, alright, and I'm going to save that by simply dragging my instrument rack into my folder, and there we go, it's saved, um, let's just play a few notes on it to see what we can get. Now I can hear that when I start playing another note, what's actually happening is this um, tail, um, the compressor's kicking in and it's getting rid of the reverb tail. So if I put the compressor before the reverb, then it'll keep the tail. Excellent. This is Keith from Cosm.com.